up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Odai Jay and we are locked in. This is the recap for episode 6 of House of the Dragon. Last week, we seen some dragons begin to do the little dance. We seen Aegon get caught on fire. The queen that never was, well, she didn't make it. And now Rhaenyra, she's trying to figure out how the hell to get the blacks in order to stop this war. Or at least try to win it. Now before we jump into this and break this down, if you like house of the dragons if you're part of team black or even team green then hit your subscribe button and turn your notification bell so you get something every time i upload make sure you hit that like button i'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers so i think we need a little over 600 and we'll be right there now also this week we get to see sea smoke another dragon and we're looking for a rider now you gotta have that targaryen blood but as of right now there's some wild dragons and we need help we start the episode off with Jason Lannister showing up with his army. He has a caged lion, and it's about a thousand of them, and then they got some archers with him also, and he's letting this guy know, listen, we're gonna go to Harrenhal once Amon shows up with Vagar. And the reason he wants Amon to show up is because they'll be able to run through anybody with that large of a dragon. We already seen what happened last week, even going against other dragons. So right now he's saying, um, send for Amon and Vagar and when he gets here, we'll have a little bit of rest and we'll go and do what we got to do. We'll go take Harrenhal. Now, he wants Harrenhal so he can be in charge of all of it. Word gets back to Dragonstone that Lannister is telling Amon what to do, telling him to fly out here and help out. Well, Amon hears this and he's like, someone tell him uh, I am the king. I don't do anything that I don't want to do. And also, Cole, go and march on Harrenhal. Now, Cole is trying to remind Amon, listen, when we went out there, we almost got torched up, man. There was nothing we could do. But he's like, I don't care about any of that. Amon wants them to go out there. Now, you have to remember, Amon is different than his brother Aegon, who's torched up. Amon, he's like a younger Damon. He wants to fight, fight, fight. Ever since he lost that eye, he ain't been right. Now, Queen Allison, after everyone leaves, she goes to talk to Amon. She's like, listen, maybe we need to reconsider and rethink how we're doing things. I did fill in for your father when he was towards the end of his days. So I know a thing or two. But Amon hears this and he's like, well, I'm not my father and you're my mother. I love you. But what I'm going to do is move you away from the small council. And he removes her from her seat. So she has no more say so in what goes on. She's still the queen, but that queen is basically like the queen that never was. You have no control. You have no power. You're just the king's mother at this point. Corley shows back up and he goes ahead and accepts the hand of Queen Rhaenyra. Now, when they're getting here, you remember at the end of the episode, Rhaenyra and her son were talking about finding other Targaryen blood that could potentially tame one of these wild dragons. Well, they summon a guy named Sir Stefan. When he shows up, his grandmother's grandmother was a Targaryen. So that bloodline that got to him is very, very thin. And she's telling him, listen, you might be able to tame one of these dragons because you do have Targaryen blood. Now it is like 124th, maybe 148th blood, but it might work. And he volunteers for it because the only thing he can do is serve his grace, Queen Rhaenyra. Damon is still tripping out. This little potion that he took, it hasn't had him right at all. He's supposed to be getting his sleep, but he has another hallucination. Once it was about his mom, this time it's about his brother, King Viserys. And he's sitting on the Iron Throne, and he's telling him, Did you say that, Damon? All I wanted was the best from you, Damon. I ordered you, as your king, to do this and to do that. But you deliberately disobeyed. So now... Damon is hearing this and he's like he wants to get out of it because he knows he was treating his brother wrong but that's because he had that own selfishness and he wanted to be in charge so he's banging on the door let me out let me out King Viserys is just sitting there watching him like this is all because of you Damon Damon goes outside and he's talking to Alice now we're not sure if Alice is real if Alice is fake but she has to be real because she's the one that made him the drink to help him sleep now she's giving him advice He's talking about trying to get the river people to help out. She's saying, nah, they're stuck in mud. They'd rather die than to help somebody else out. 
So he's wondering what can he do next? But the advice she gives him is don't do anything now. Eventually the wind will blow over. Basically meaning let whatever's going to happen, happen. And then you'll be able to see a little bit clearly. Now, if you watch this episode, we'll start to see what that means a little bit more because we know that Renera is trying to get other dragon riders. So if you don't do anything now, what's supposed to be will happen. They take Sir Stefan out to try and talk to Sea Smoke. Now they're doing their ritual. Why no? Yeah. Oh, nah, nah, do. They're summoning Sea Smoke. Now Sea Smoke shows up. Sir Stefan is out there and he's slowly creeping towards him. We're thinking that he's about to tame Sea Smoke. As soon as he gets close enough, he says, I did it. He's getting a little too excited. And Sea Smoke lowered his head as if it was going to let Stefan be a rider. But then Sea Smoke raised up and let off a fire that you could not withstand and lit him up and one of the handlers. Everybody's running out there. Venera's just watching. Well, I guess that plan didn't go how we thought it would. Lord Corlys goes to talk to Aaron, and he's the one that actually saved him and pulled him out the boat when they got tore up. Now, he's saying that they're about to set sail in a couple of days, and he wants Aaron to be his first mate. Now, Aaron and his brother are Corley's sons. That's why when we seen the queen that never was, Rainy come over and talk to her. She was like, wherever your mother was was probably beautiful. Now, they're acting like they don't know this, and he's still calling them Lord instead of Father, but he's trying to decline it. But Corley says, no, I want you to come with me. I was actually younger than you, when I took command of my first ship because he knows it's his son and he's basically putting him in that position to at least try to take over something even though he hasn't been around for years. Queen Rhaenyra has set out a plan and what she's trying to do is stir up some stuff within King's Landing. She's letting everyone know since there's a hunger issue, there's no food, but up in the council, they're eating like kings, which they are every single night. The dragons, they're getting five to 10 lambs a day. Well, everyone's sitting down here saying when King Viserys was the king, he wouldn't have done this. If there was a food shortage, he would have looked out for us. So now all of the small people, the peasants, they're all looking at it like, wait a minute. Why are we serving our Lord and being loyal to our Lord if they're not going to help us out? If we're starving, but they're eating and living lavishly. Back at the small council, Amon is talking to Lowry's. Now, remember, he's Clefoot. His pops and everyone else, they're over in Harnall with Damon. Now, Amon, he's trying to figure out what his next move is. So what he does is tell Lowry's, listen, I need me a hand, just like every other king. So Lowry's is thinking he's about to make him the hand. But he says, no. What I want you to do is go look for Otto Hightower, his grandfather, Allison's father, and bring him on in because even though he may have not been the best for my brother Amon, he's always going to look out for the whole family. In my bet, I meant Aegon because the master came in here and said that Aegon is conscious now. Amon goes over there to talk to Aegon as soon as he finds out that he's conscious and he's asking him, what do you remember? It was stupid for you to go out there and attack. I told you it was. This is basically an I told you moment. And what he's looking at is his brother and he's thinking, well, if he recovers, then he'll come back to being king. But if he doesn't recover, then I'll stay king. So he's basically letting his brother Aegon know I'm in charge now. And that's why he gave him the ball. Whoever has that ball, you put it in the little plate and that shows who you are at the table. So now he's basically telling everybody, let Aegon rest and I'll take it over from here. Rhaenyra and her son are talking about the plan that they put in place to try to find some kind of Targaryen blood. Now it didn't work, but Sir Stefan did volunteer. He did say, I'm doing this for my queen, my grace, and he's gonna do whatever. Now she's saying, listen, it's like people don't even respect me and my ruling. They keep telling me that I need Damon. I need Damon to show up. Damon, Damon, Damon. But her son is saying, listen, you're my queen and I'm gonna serve you regardless. You're my mother also, but the queen is the most important part. And we believe in you and we will do as you say. So don't even look at it as if you really need Damon, although they do. Now, Queen Rhaenyra's plan 
was to start sending people over food, whether it's fruit, whether it's meat. She's sending all of this over to King's Landing to let everyone know, I am the chosen one. I am the queen of all of this. Right now, you got Amon in charge and they're not even looking out for you. So when they send this food over, all of the small people, the peasants, they're looking at it like, wait a minute, Queen Renera is actually looking out for us? And you see they got the black flag with the dragon being sent in. So now everyone's looking at it like, man, if she was in charge over here, we would be living better. Because even though we're at war, she's still sending us food. And she's not even here in King's Landing. While all of this is going on, Sir Christian is getting ready to ride off. Now we see Allison talking to her brother. And remember, he's came over here to help out and to look out for Sir Christian. Just to watch him and make sure he's not doing anything slick. But Allison's starting to bring up how was her youngest son doing? Is he all right? And he's like, yeah, he's doing pretty good over there. Smart kid. And then she also brings up their childhood and asks, does he feel a certain type of way because they came over here and they were living like royalty? He was like, nah, it was best that I got raised in Old Town. I'm the oldest high tower, so I needed to stay over there. That's just family tradition. Now, these two, you could tell that they were close when they were younger. It's just they've been separated so far. It's kind of awkward. Well, more on her part, and since she's a queen now, he has to respect her as a queen. He can't just talk to her like it's his sister. Well, word finally made it back to King's Land, and that food was sent over here by Queen Renera. So they have to get everyone up out of here. Allison, her daughter, they have to get them out. The white cloaks they're trying to escort. Because people are going crazy. They're throwing things at Queen Allison like, boo, the hell with them. The hell with them. One of the white cloaks chops a man's arm off. Allison is like, whoa, 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 put the swords up. Because she doesn't want to show people that we're killing the people that are attacking. We didn't have anything to do with this. But now she's looking at it like this game is about to be played very, very different. Queen Renera, very strategic. You got to got put these plans out. You got to have some kind of plan. You can't just be running wild. And she's turning the people against the hierarchy. Now, this is interesting here because we know only Targaryens can fly dragons. They can be dragon riders. Well, we see Adam and Adam is running. Sea smoke is flying out of nowhere. Now, he corners Adam. And the speculation is maybe because Sea smoke has been sensing that people are trying to tame him. And Sea smoke doesn't want to be tamed by just anyone. Now, Lenore used to be the one that was the rider of sea smoke. So maybe sea smoke can smell that, that blood connection between Adam and Lenore. So maybe this is why sea smoke has came over here and Adam is probably gonna be the new rider of sea smoke. Now we do see Renera and Maseris, they're getting closer and closer because they've been putting these plans together. She also promised her, if you give me this information on how I can get in there and talk to Allison, then all right, we'll have a spot for you. So they get close and they start kissing, but in comes one of the knights, and the knights is saying, um, your grace, Sea Smoke has a rider, and we're not sure who it is, but we need to send out somebody to go find out who this new rider Sea Smoke is. Because if the blacks don't get Sea Smoke on their side, it could be the end of them. If the greens get another dragon on their side, plus Vagar, oh, there's gonna be no competition. All right, there you go to recap of episode six of House of the Dragon. Let me know what you think about this new rider of Sea Smoke. If it is Adam, how is that bond going to come about? Sea Smoke can smell that it has a relationship, like the bloodline is connected between Lenor and Adam, or however that works. Let me know what you think. And also, do you think that? Aegon is going to survive this because Aemon sure doesn't seem like he wants him to. But let me know what you think. I'm ODIJ. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Sorry about this recap being a little late, but we got it. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.